so thanks for having me. I'm really excited to be here. This is an issue which is really close to my heart. Um, for context, I kind of grew up in a Nigerian family, first generation Nigerian family. Um, and contact with police is something which was really important to my political awakening, as well as my now academic research. So um, I'm going to start here. So the most striking success of the ideology of policing is in convincing us that the castle system was a natural development, that it was always going to be the case that human beings would police each other, and specifically that human beings would police each other in the way that we do today. But contrary, contrary to popular opinion, institutionalized policing is actually a relatively modern phenomenon in the course of like human history. Um, and in particular, we can think of a couple of examples in America, um, the roots of policing were in slave catching uh, patrols in the South and attempts to control the movement of immigrants in the North. Um, but also in England, the first professional police force, uh, which was the Metropolitan Police, was established uh, in 18th Okay, so, uh, so in the UK, uh, the Metropolitan Police Force was established in 1829, so it's just a little bit under two centuries ago. But what I'm here to kind of talk about mainly is some of the roots of policing in the West, which come from the period of colonization, which spanned across the globe. But I really want us to keep in mind this idea of policing is not a natural phenomenon as the product of specific technologies and as the product of an attempt to police dissent in terms of uh, the rise of uh, capitalism. So I'm going to start with a particular example um, in terms of the colonial roots of policing. So I mentioned earlier that I come from Nigeria. And one thing which is really striking to me is that in Nigeria, we had our first police force 10 years before the Metropolitan Police was established in 1816. So it was a small police force which was um, set up in Lagos. Um, and here we see one of the key uh, technologies of policing in that a group, uh, a group which was ethnically different to the Lagos population was sort of carted in in what became known as the Alsa Guard to prevent uh, resistance to uh, colonization in the south of the country. And uh, it's important to kind of uh, periodize policing in this way because um, when the NSARS movement happened back in 2020, um, there was a sense in which people thought that uh, operatives in, uh, in uh, the UK, especially kind of galvanized by the um, realization of the revelation, actually, that the British government had both funded um, and armed and trained SARS operatives um, without our knowledge, people kind of thought of police forces and more broadly military forces in the uh, global south as kind of taking their cues from the global north, right? And uh, I want to kind of upset or trouble this timeline in a sense. And what I will argue is that before we see um, the professionalization in urban cities in the global north, uh, that's in kind of uh, America and the UK and kind of Europe more broadly, we see the kind of testing of certain tactics of policing in the global south. And I want to take the case study of Nigeria um, to be able to kind of illustrate this point. So, as I said before, um, Nigeria uh, got its first official police force, it was a small police force back in 1816, which was over 10 years before the Metropolitan Police was established in the UK. And the primary function of the Alsa Guard, which it came to be known, was the policing of resistance to formal colonization on the continent. So colonization on the African continent in the formal sense is kind of uh, takes place over a quite short uh, time span, um, starting from the late uh, 19th century. This uh, eventually develops by the end of the century into the official um, Lagos police force, and other regions kind of start to take uh, a follow suit. And essentially, there are a few technologies which are kind of crucial to policing in the Nigerian context, which we can see reflected uh, in policing as it develops um, in other parts uh, of the country, but also uh, back in the homestead. So the few that I want to talk about firstly is, so in order to establish a police force, you kind of have, um, uh, you, you, you have to have obviously physical resources, the ability to arrest people, places to put people, prisons, right? So some of the first prisons are built by colonial forces. 
But then you also have new technologies which start being implemented in order to facilitate that process of policing, especially as we move from um, simply the crude shooting people or, or, or beating people with batons when they try to protest to preemptive policing, which becomes a, a tactic of colonial forces, which that involves um, the use of uh, the use of infiltration into uh, uh, native or, uh, political organization. It also involves um, the use of surveillance. And then the final one, which I think is is particularly important in this case, um, is the use of ideology. Right. So obviously, it seems absurd to suggest that the kind of British mantra of policing by consent is possible um, in the context of a colonial society. But there are ways in which consent is manufactured in Nigeria, which kind of gives us some sense of what we see later, especially in the 20th century in Britain. Two technologies I want to kind of draw um, uh, attention to. The first is the technology of the moral panic, right? And so uh, in the Nigerian context, uh, what you had was um, uh, big campaigns which centered around the notion of rising crime um, as colonial authorities attempt to kind of blend themselves into traditional um, structures of authority, right? These oftentimes precipitated particularly uh, gruesome increases in the kind of um, sharpest edge of policing and the sharpest edge of violence meted out against Nigerians. Um, but this was facilitated specifically, and this is where it becomes interesting, by a project of politicizing ethnicity. So Nigeria, unlike kind of what Britain may have looked like back 200 years ago, is a country with over 200 languages spoken and a number of different minority groups, but two, uh, three major uh, groups within the country, which are the Alsa, the Yoruba and the Igbo. And what was... Uh, what the uh, colonial authorities were very successfully able to do is integrate into the new state institutions of policing um, systems such as identification cards, which fix people within ethnic groups and therefore were used or leveraged through moral panic to, uh, uh, to police, right? So for example, um, in Lagos, which is a tradi traditionally Yoruba part of the country, obviously through the slave trade, but also because it was at the time the capital, um, I'm talking now about the early 20th century, at the time the capital of Nigeria, um, what you had was an increasingly diverse um, population. And so what you, uh, in, in response to this, uh, and response to the possibility of unification or solidarity between people um, in Lagos, um, you had the singling out of particular groups such as Northerners and such as Easterners in Lagos for uh, over-policing uh, uh, over and um, uh, surveillance. Now, I kind of wanna put this in broader context, right? Because this is something that is developing on the continent, but it's also something that's developing in relationship to policing back home. So I mentioned earlier that the Metropolitan Police Force um, in the UK was established um, in 1829. And back home, though we are back in the metropole, though you didn't have the kind of ethnic uh, diversity of ethnicity um, that you had in Nigeria in the 19th century and early 20th century, what you did have was a particular commitment to brutal policing on behalf of property. And I think that's something to, that always has to remain central when we think about the function of police in society, right? The police are essentially the repressive institution of the state, which enables it to enforce what is termed the rule of law. Um, the enforcement of that law involves the protection of central um, categories of cap uh, capitalism, such as um, uh, the right to property um, and the enforcement of contracts, which ultimately benefit um, the people in society who are the most privileged. Now, this picture where on the one hand in the metropole, the working class have attempts to unionize met with brutal violence by the state and in the colonial um, in the colonial territories um, you have the attempt to resist colonization or resist uh, the burden of taxation from colonization met with brutal force by the state opens up some possibilities in the way that we can think of resistance to policing which isn't kind of bordered along uh, strict racial or ethnic lines. It shows us that actually the dividing line is not between um, 
whichever group is singled out at a particular or given moment as a scapegoat, uh, whether that's, you know, to bring it into contemporary terms, a Nigerian fraudster, or um, whether um, that's uh, 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 kind of any other group who is identified, whether that's uh, an illegal immigrant, right? There's a collective benefit or a collective possibility um, for those, sorry, for those um, on the ground when we identify the uh, dividing line of our politics to collectively resist. Um, I wanna finish uh, in just a second, but what I wanna say um, before we go is that the story of policing across the world is intimately tied to the story of capitalism, intimately tied to a story of extraction and a story of exploitation. And when we think about it in those terms, suddenly some of the, some of the phenomena that we see contemporarily, um, such as the sharpening edge of policing and brutality um, when it comes to the border, for migration, or um, domestically, the incre incredibly disproportionate rates of stop and searching and surveillance of particular ethnic communities, um, it makes a lot more sense. As we move to the conversation, if we bear that in mind, I think that we will be able to uh, move closer to uh, concession of policing, which enables us to resist not just the idea of police or achieve bad apples within police, but policing in general. Thank you.